ever raised a youngin? Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got six under my belt. The last one turned out good. He's sitting back there. I wish I could say the same for all of them. But there's one thing I've found that sometimes we can't tell a young and not to do something once. That we end up having to tell them multiple times. Uh, and it's the same for the children of God. You know, we need to hear multiple times what the scriptures say. And so, as I observe uh, the flock, sometimes I feel like that there's some of you that probably can't just deal with your pre-salvation issues. And, and you, you may not be burdened down with it, but you don't feel like that you can go out and represent him because of stuff you've done. And guys, oh, that's rain. <laughs> we got a drum roll going on somewhere. But anyway, so uh, uh, I hope that you'll be able to get a, a grip on the complete forgiveness that God has already given you if you're saved. He's already done it. Um, we haven't had the Lord's Supper for quite a while because of this COVID thing. Because the way we do it, it's like sharing, uh, uh, you know, the cup and everything. So what I've done, I really miss it. So what I've done is I went out and uh, we bought the kind that they have in most churches that you peel the top off, there's the wafer, and you peel the next layer off, and there's the the uh, the juice. And so uh, after I get done talking with you, uh, we're going to experience the Lord's Supper together. Larry will, uh, we're not even going to touch them. Larry's got, they're still in the box, and Larry will go around and you take one out of the box. You know, it's going to be real simple. No fear. Amen. Uh, so, I, you know, I feel like I just want to pray. You know, I'm, I'm going to pray right now. Father, Father, I pray you would lift the burdens off of those who feel like they don't qualify to represent you. And Father, we know that it's so easy to feel that way because you're such a mighty, holy God. And we are sinners. Yet when you look at us, you see holy and righteous because of your Son. Lord, we're grateful for that, Father. Lord, I pray you would encourage uh, your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, I'm going to fill you up with Scripture. It's a good thing you can take this stuff home. Because uh, I want to I wanna share with you the forgiving nature, his nature of our Savior. Okay, and so there's there's a lot of. Uh oh, wait. God isn't holding your past against you. Why are you? This has been the single most important thing that over these 29 years as being senior pastor that I have had to deal with in the lives of people. They just feel like there's this burden on them when it is not. When God forgives us, we are forgiven. And so I want to share with you a little bit about what the Bible says because it doesn't matter what I say. We need to go back to the Bible, right? And so, why won't we receive God's total forgiveness? Guys, everything that we've ever done is forgiven. It's done. So, uh, Hebrews 8.12 is for you. It says, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Hey, man, if God doesn't remember it, 
who cares what people say? You know, I, I, I've been dealing with a with a young man who's had some serious cancer surgery, and he's now in the dumps, and and um, he just feels like that. Uh, Life is just not worth it anymore, and and he was a, and is a talented painter of vehicles and motorcycles and 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 drawing these amazing pictures and making it look like you can walk into them. But now he had throat cancer and jaw. They had to take part of his arm bone, put it in his jaw, and make a new jaw. And he's having a hard time because he can't talk. Uh, all he can do is write on paper. Now they tell him within a couple of years he'll be able to talk. But man, that's a hard sentence, you know, when you think about it. And so he's down the dump, so I'm, I'm kind of encouraging him and stuff. But this is a tough one for him, and it's a tough one for most people to get a grip on total <laughs> forgiveness. Then Hebrews 8.17 is also for us. It says, then he adds their sins and lawless acts. Anybody ever broke the law in here? I have a couple of times. I will remember no more. Oh, man, that's good news. I love Romans 8.1, don't you guys? Therefore, there is now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are saved, there is no condemnation. You're not condemned. God is not holding it against you. So I'm, I've got four points here that, that will re reveal to us the forgiving nature of Jesus. I mean, think about it. Right from the beginning, he left heaven because we need forgiveness. So the first one is Matthew 9, 1 and 2. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw them working on his behalf, guys, we have no idea. We have no idea when we talk to people every day and God bless you, we have no idea the impact. But it says when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. He didn't even ask for it. But because of their faith, because of our faith, God can work miracles, guys. The second one is John 8, 1 to 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. I don't know if you guys know this story. They didn't bring the guy. What is that all about? They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was called in, a, in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. No one knows what he wrote. But I've got good suspicions because of the result of what he wrote. You know? When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. That's powerful. We need to remember this when we're dealing with others in the body of Christ. You know, I mean, when you get perfect, you know, then you're qualified. And I'm not talking about um, talking to a brother because 
of, of some areas in his life that's not lining up with scripture. But we are not the sin police. We're just a group of sinners that come together and love each other and love God. That's what we are. You know? Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, as the people are watching him write and seeing what he's writing, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first. The ones who have lived longer and had more opportunities to pile up sin. Right? Until only Jesus was left. With the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, I love this woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Because of what Jesus did, the condemners had to go. No one, sir, she said, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. He doesn't forgive us so that we can keep on going and living the life that we had to get forgiveness for. He gives, he forgives us so that we can walk in newness, you know, refreshed, forgiven. And third one is Luke chapter seven, verses thirty-six to fifty. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. You know, one of the things I think that he may have wrote down there on the ground could have been the guy that she committed adultery with who was probably standing there. Mm. One of the accusers. A lot of times we lash out at others for what we've got a problem with, you know. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and re reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume, and as she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. She was sorrowful for her life. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, he said to himself, okay, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. As if he's not. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. <laughs> it's amazing how Jesus deals with stuff straight up. No milk toast, no wishy-washy. Tell me, teacher, he said, two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them would love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned... Uh, toward the woman and said to Simon. Now he's turned toward the woman and he's talking to Simon, right? Do you see this woman, Simon? I came into your house. It's getting, getting ready to get good. I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. A sinner. Seeking forgiveness. 
You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, so because of that, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. For she loved much. She went to the only one that could f forgive her sin. And it happened. It was done. She was there repentful, sorrowful. But he who has been given little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. She sought him. And he forgave her. That's how we get saved. We search him and give him our lives. Make him king of our lives, lord of our lives. That means he's calling the shots in our lives. We're forgiven. We are. The fourth one, the last one is in Luke chapter 23. It says, two other men both criminals were also let out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly. The criminals were being given the penalty for their crimes. And so this one guy is saying, we deserve this. For we are getting what we, our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Now isn't that something? That this criminal be standing there saying, he hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. It's not hard to be forgiven. But you've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus. This criminal put his faith in Jesus because he knew that Jesus could save him, that he would be able to go to heaven. Right there in that last minute, you know. I mean, that's why I, I think deathbed salvations are real, you know. It all boils down to this, guys. That's in Ephesians 4.32. This is for us. Be kind and compassionate to one another, talking about Christians. Forgiving each other. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. And then what does that mean? We didn't deserve it when we got saved. You may have those little grumblings going around. We don't have much of it here. But guys, if we simply look at him instead of that, We didn't deserve it when Jesus. We may, you need to understand that you don't deserve it and neither does the other person. You're on the same playing field. You're both sinners. Don't be lashing out at other people. And this is talking about non-salvation issues. You'd be surprised how many people grumble and stuff about the color of the chairs. Get a grip. Get over it. Look up instead of that way. All this kind of stuff, you know. 
And so the closing thought, guys, is in Colossians. I hope you've understood so far that if you're saved, your past doesn't count. It doesn't count. What you've got to do is get your mind in a place where you understand that Jesus has commissioned you to share this with the world. In how you live and what you say. You're worthy. If you're saved, you're worthy to share the gospel with people. God bless you. It's so simple. Closing thought in Colossians 3, 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, talking about Christians, holy and dearly loved because of what Jesus did, not, not in and of ourselves, but God looks at us as holy and dearly loved. His son gave his life for us. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Get wrapped up in that. Then verse, I love the first word in verse 13. Bear with each other. That means it ain't going to be easy. That means you may have to play second fiddle. You know, you ain't always going to get your way. Bear with each other. Some people may not be at the spiritual level that you're at. Bear with them. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances. You may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you when you didn't deserve it. And over all these virtues, put on love. Guys, that, that's one of the things that is, is so awesome about this church. We love each other here. You know, it, we're a family here. Which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Not self-centeredness. The peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace with each other. And be thankful. If you're thankful, you can't be grumbling. I don't know about you, man, but I'm thankful for my life. Man. God lets me and my son, mainly my son, work on these cars and stuff, building dream cars that I've always wanted. And buying and selling parts, getting money, buying more parts. It's just exciting, you know. And ever since this has happened, basically Michael's doing everything. I'm just pointing. I'm, I'm developing my pointing muscle, you know. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, and uh, hanging out in you, dwelling. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another. I love the one another's. With all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Man, this is awesome. And whatever you do, this, is, this wraps it up, right? Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, what, your actions or your speech, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Guys, you know what's neat? We can't do this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we can't do this. But 
when we fall short, we have a Lord that forgives us if we ask him. So that's what this is all about today, guys, is your past don't count. And every day you can renew your forgiveness. And it's not about your past, it's about the present now. Because your past is gone. You don't need to ask for forgiveness for your past anymore. Even though it, we may hear it in our minds, it's gone. God would say, what? What? What do you? I don't know anything about that. He casts our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. That means he forgets it. Yeah. Remembers it no more. Yeah. It's done. Mm -hmm. Let's start living like it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to uh, receive the Lord's Supper. I want to tell you a little bit about this. God didn't say, do this if you feel worthy. He didn't say, uh, do it uh, when you get your affairs in order. He said, do this in remembrance of me. We do this and remember him. Not, we don't do it because we're good enough. But he also said not to take the cup in vain. You know, so what, what that means is, right now, we've got a couple of minutes and we can say, Father, forgive me up to this point. Lord, I'll do better. It's done. The forgiving nature of Jesus is ever-present in our lives from minute to minute. There been a lot of times when I've walked out of Walmart knowing there was somebody in there and I wanted to say something. I wanted to say, God bless you today, and didn't. And I just felt like, oh, man, I really missed it. Forgive me, Father. Help me to be more bold when it comes to my faith. So take, take a minute and, uh, and do business. Do business with him. We all need to do that every day.